from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show today. Not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. In this hour of the program, I had some thoughts uh, I want to express to you um, in the face of the ongoing job action by the Writers Guild. I'm not a writer, I'm not a member of the Writers Guild, and I haven't taken a position. And I don't uh, want anyone to think I'm taking a position in the uh, dispute between the movie studios, the television networks, and the the writers. And in fact, uh, nothing I say here should be considered uh, a diss to writers. In fact, if anything... It's a compliment to writers. Because uh, I've been in this business my whole life doing what I do. And I'm not crying on your shoulder because I am buttressed by thousands of hundred dollar bills here. I, I'm really not expecting you to cry crocodile tears for me. I make a great living, probably better than a lot of the writers who are on strike. So uh, uh, I'm not asking for your empathy, your sympathy, or your concern. I am doing great. But I must say that I find it, uh, I don't want to say entertaining, let's just say intriguing, that in the perfect world where... Scripts are being written and movies are being made and jokes are being cranked out and talk shows are being produced. Most people in the entertainment industry look at what we do as being the bottom rung of the ladder in the entertainment industry. I might say that uh, when people come out there to promote a new movie, any new movie. Generally, you'll notice they pass by shows like the Tom Likas show. And the reason they tell us is because generally the, the biggest answer you get is, we don't do radio. We don't do radio. And here's what I find fascinating about that. All right, folks, you don't do radio. But the minute the writers put their pencils down, the two biggest places where people promote movies, The Tonight Show and Late Night with David Letterman, they shut down immediately. John Stewart, that brilliant John Stewart, he's brilliant. First day of the strike, no show. Colbert Report, look at that guy. Wow. Smart, funny. Without writers, bam, out of business. I don't know if you've been paying attention or if you've noticed yet, but all of those shows went off the air. They're running reruns. Because without writers, they can't do a show. This is not a rerun. This is a brand spanking new episode of this program. And I have to speak up for people who do what I do for a living. And it's not just specifically me, it's all of us. You see a lot of people thumping their chest about how important writers are, how important producers are, how important showrunners are, etc., etc. But it's time somebody spoke out for what we do. The brilliance of what we do here. 
the art, the craft, which is never appreciated, especially by many of the people out on those picket lines right now, can now be fully appreciated. Because guess what? There's no teleprompter here. There's no script here. No matter how long a strike goes on, every day there'll be hours and hours of fresh programming. Every day. We don't need writers. We don't need them. Many of the people you think are brilliant, hysterically funny, the minute they don't have writers, they're done. They're toast. They're out of business. I can tell you this because I've made three television pilots, and nothing freaks out TV people more than somebody like me who wants to go on camera, and they say, oh, here's your script. I say, I don't need a script. Well, what are you going to say? I don't know yet. Let's take that Dennis Miller, for example. Now, here's a guy that people generally think very highly of, even though he hasn't done anything that's ever gotten ratings. Anything, okay? He's done a syndicated uh, talk show that went up against The Tonight Show and Letterman. Failed. Had a talk show on CNBC. Failed. Had a show on HBO. Did anybody watch that show? You know what? I went over and saw it one day. Went over and watched Dennis Miller. And he had a TV show called Dennis Miller Live. It was on HBO. And I uh, sleezed my way into Television City over at Beverly and Fairfax here in Hollywood, and I uh, went to watch them do the show. And you know how Dennis Miller is always saluted for doing all these riffs? He does riffs. He riffs on stuff. He riffs. Nobody was more shocked than I was to go watch... Dennis Miller live and to see Dennis Miller's riff as he was reading it off a teleprompter. You know, a riff, the, the term riff comes from a guitar riff. And a guitar riff, if you know anything about music, and I know very little myself, but a guitar riff is generally improvised. There's generally a bridge in the music someplace where the guitarist, you know, improvises, it's usually a kind of a solo, like like a drum solo, and, and the guy improvises the music. And so a verbal riff is like, you know, you're sitting there and you're, you're kind of throwing off topics, you're throwing off ideas, you're cracking punchlines and stuff like that. And people say, Dennis Miller, oh yeah, he riffs. No, he doesn't. Dennis Miller reads a script. He reads a script. Did anybody out there know that Dennis Miller has a radio show? How's that doing? Yeah. <laughs> I know. You didn't even know he had a radio show, right? That's my point. People who work in television have to have a script or they're dead. And that's one thing the writer's strike proves. And one has to wonder now, now that the worm has turned, you know, even though there's a strike going on, there are plenty of movies being released, plenty of TV shows that are still airing original episodes. And, you know, the movie studios and the, the TV networks are probably going to want to promote those shows. They don't have a Tonight Show. They don't have a Letterman Show. Authors of big-name books, big-name guests who go on Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert, guess what? Close for the season. Done. So I'm waiting for that phone to ring, not because I'm anxious to have guests on the program. I'm anxious to see which people who ignore us, which people who say, I don't do radio, or my client doesn't do radio, or our firm doesn't do radio. I'm anxious to see how many of these people will finally figure out that while everybody's out there eating donuts on the picket line, we are putting out live hours of fresh programming every day. And we may end up being one of the few vehicles to promote these projects. And I guarantee you that phone is going to ring. I guarantee it. And it will be fascinating to see who it is that never calls us to ask us if we'd like, you know, Jerry Seinfeld on or Steve Carell or whatever. It will be fascinating to see who calls us first, trying to get one of their clients on, when normally they would never call us. 
And that's how you're going to know this strike is getting serious. When the big-time publicists start calling the Tom Likens show and say, hey, Tom Cruise needs to come on. I don't know if Tom Cruise will be able to come to our studio, but that's another question altogether. Don't ask me why. People who do radio generally are the real improvisers. This is writing. Every word I'm saying is being spoken for the first time. It is not being read off a page. It is not being read off a card. It has not been rehearsed. We're able to keep doing this show every single day holding millions of people enthralled listening to it. And it's not just us. There are other people who do it and do it well. We get very little appreciation. And in fact, I must tell you, my appreciation is in my paycheck. So I don't need your appreciation, okay? You just listen. Use it for whatever you want to use it for. Play it in the background while you're in the carpool. Play it while you're doing your old lady. Whatever. That's fine. But I want to point out that while some of your favorite shows are in reruns, we're here live doing new shows every goddamn day. And I don't have to depend on a writer to come in here and write me some funny yucks. There aren't ten people sitting around a table debating what punchline I'm going to use, which punchline at 410, which punchline at 432, what punchline at 451. No, no. It's just me. And you're right, Dean. You know, you see... Uh, Vince Vaughn's a good example. There's a good example. Vince Vaughn, who I've met, by the way, I guess already, you know, he's got a new movie coming out, and already he has been using some of those alternative ways of promoting his, his movie. I, I, why name it if he's not going to come on the show? He's got a movie coming out. He appeared on the World Series, I guess, in view of the fact there would be no Leno or Letterman shows to go on. And then, over the weekend, my producer Gary and I, we were in Dallas to go to Texas Motor Speedway to the Dickies 500. And what a day that was on Sunday. We had just a spectacular time. And they've got the radio playing. And who is on the radio broadcast of the NASCAR race on Sunday? Vince Vaughn, humping his movie. Now, do you think Vince Vaughn normally or his publicist would make Vince Vaughn available to be on a NASCAR broadcast or to be on a baseball broadcast? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So you're going to start seeing weird things like that happening. The publicists and some of the celebrities themselves will probably start dialing up over here and asking, you know, when they can come on and plug their stuff. And I don't know whether or not we'll put them on, frankly. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But it will be interesting because these are the very same people who walk right past us the rest of the time. But the reality is that we're going to be here no matter how long there's a strike. You know, we're not in that union. We understand the dispute and the strife between the parties. And, you know, we live in Hollywood and we see it close up. We understand. But we're not in that union. So we do this show every day. It's going to be here every day. And yes, Dean, there, uh, there was one particular person. I'm not going to name him. You're right, I shouldn't name him, and I'm not going to. There was one particular comedian who was, uh, let's just say controversial, and was involved in a particular controversy. Back in the early 90s, this guy was huge at the time, and you know he was selling out big venues and everything. It was just a big deal. And um, my producer at the time contacted him and asked him to come on my program, and we were told about this guy. He doesn't do radio. He doesn't do radio. Like we're asking him to do windows. <laughs> like, like we're talking to the maid or something. He doesn't do radio. Right. Well, fast forward to about 15 years later, and this person has fallen upon hard times. He can't get arrested, okay? 
Because you know how it is in the comedy world. There's always that guy who's the hottest comedian, right? There's always that one guy who is Chris Rock or whatever, whoever the hottest comedian is at a given time. There's that one guy. And what usually happens to these guys after they've been the number one comedian? In most cases, they fall off a cliff. Their career falls off a cliff. So imagine a guy who used to play in front of 15,000 people now can't get arrested. And he personally, as well as his publicist, have called the offices of the Tom Likas show repeatedly asking if he can come on and promote whatever little project he's doing. And my response is, I thought you don't do radio. I have a long memory. I'll never forget people who tell me they don't do radio as they're on the way down (laughs) begging to get on the program. I'll never forget that. Anyway, as I have said, and to wrap this uh, this little montage up here in a bow, I'm not asking for your sympathy. I'm not asking you to weep for me. No, no. (laughs) I get lots of money to sit here. I don't need your sympathy. I'm just letting you know that people don't value what we do because it's ephemeral. Look it up. Every pun I spin, every tale I tell, it goes into this microphone out in the thin air, comes out the speakers in your car, you laugh and you move on. It isn't sold on a CD or a DVD. It doesn't hang in an art gallery. It isn't stacked up at Blockbuster. It is art that is considered to be disposable. But there's going to come a time as there are more and more reruns on TV that you're going to appreciate what we do. Not just us, all the people who do this. You're going to appreciate What we bring to the table, we don't need writers. We don't need showrunners. We don't need producers and associate producers. We don't need wardrobe people. God damn, take a look at us. We don't need wardrobe people. You know what I'm talking about. We come in here every day and pump out a funny, witty, entertaining program without the help of any of these people. And I'm just hoping as your life becomes more and more reruns and more and more channel surfing, you'll think to come to us more often, and you'll appreciate what we bring to your table. Not just us on the Tom Likas show, but we who do radio. We're very much in the entertainment industry, and we're not valued as much as we ought to be valued. But you'll come to appreciate it more the less movies are released, the less sitcoms have new episodes, the less dramatic shows have new episodes. When, when Grey's Anatomy goes away and Lost goes away and Desperate Housewives goes away and CSI goes away and Big Bang Theory goes away and Two and a Half Men goes away, as these shows stop airing new episodes and you are looking for things to do, stuff to watch or listen to, you'll remember what I'm saying today, that we are every bit as talented and funny as many of the people who write the material who are on strike right now. But because they write episodes of shows like Seinfeld that end up being rerun in perpetuity and they're on seven different channels and you see them forever, that art, and it is art, that art is revered and ours is reviled. But you're going to appreciate us a lot more as time goes on in the next few months. Tell you what. Do you disagree? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The 2008 Like It Calendar Release Party. This Friday at Canyon Club in Agoura Hills, California. Visit blowmeuptom.com for details. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. <laughs> Let's take your calls now. 
we go on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Thank you, Tom. My name is Rigo. I'm calling from Long Beach. Uh, and you know what? I've been listening to you for four years. And thanks to you, to your show, I got rid of my wife. And um, I'm divorcing her. And you know what? And she hates you. She brought that up in court. And thanks to you. Really? Yes, Tom. Thank you. I'm here to You're help. The man. <laughs> You're the man. She hates you. She brought that up in court. And you know what? Uh, she don't like you for one bit. But you know what? I keep listening to you. I love that. Uh, you know what? Thank you. You're the man. Keep it going, Rigo. Thank you. Appreciate Bye-bye. the call. Here comes Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Do I, you know, I don't care, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> hey, I love the wine show, dude. I love it. Thank you. A little more on beer. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, we will. I'll start hey, with a st- wait. I'm going to start by drinking some fat tire right now. Right? Oh, flat tire! Yeah, fantastic. Hey, I uh, love the subject. You know, Letterman and and uh, and Leno, they're comedians. They can write their own stuff. It doesn't take a monologue to make their show good. I love talk radio. I don't listen to the radio for music. I listen to it for talk because it's entertaining. It's ten, twelve hours worth of entertainment. And I feel that. You know, yeah, the writers need to make a living. They need to do their stuff. But you know what? They can do their own stuff. It doesn't need to be written down every single word to make it entertaining. You guys do a great job. Your show lasts forever, and it's entertaining. People love to listen to your show. That's why people make your radio station one of the best radio stations in Los Angeles. I mean, does anybody really think uh, that uh, David Letterman can come in here and do a show like this for four hours and be funny every day. That's, you know what? It would start sounding like comedy traffic school at the end of the day. That's why he was a weatherman, for, first of all. You know, and he got into comedy and he's doing his stuff. He can write his own stuff. He's funny enough to do his stuff without people writing stuff for him. Why, he doesn't doesn't he, why, why isn't he doing it? I, you know, I think it's just a publicity thing, and I, I understand the Internet's taking over and telephones and all that kind of stuff, downloading stuff, but it doesn't take that. I mean, they can do the, you guys, do you do it for what, five hours, six hours a day? Yes. And, and I mean, I listen to you, I listen to a couple other talk radios during the day while you're on, but I listen to you quite a bit, and of course your wine show, which I really like that wine show, by the way. It makes me more appreciative of, of, of for culture but for the fact that there's priceable wine and economical wine for people to buy. But you are funny. You're a funny guy, and you do a great job. And Frosty, how do you afraid they do a fantastic job? And it's just worth just sitting around the radio, like the old days, listening to the radio and enjoying it. My challenge to the people on television who do shows, their talk shows, is this. If you're as talented as you want us to think you are... Why don't you go do your show without writers? Let's exactly. see how good you really are. Exactly. Put them in front of a, of a, of a radio station with a, with a uh, camera going on, on the Internet. And you know what? I, I honestly think Letterman can do a great job. I want to see Carson Daly do an hour without a writer. <laughs> I want to see it. Exactly. I hey, Tom, want to see that. It's a privilege that. to talk to you, man. I'm going to let you go, get it to other people. But, man, do, do what you got to do and do the great job you do. Thank you, Jim. Take it easy. Appreciate the call. Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, I, I was just wondering, uh, I, I think that it's totally too, they're not really comparable things because these guys are on TV and you're behind a microphone and they don't see you or anything. Has nothing to do with anything. That has nothing to do with it? No, I mean, sure, if the wardrobe people went on strike, it would make a difference. If the lighting people went on strike, it would make a difference. But we're talking about the content of what people say. Yeah, but, and, and, oh, and on that, on that note... What does a TV camera being turned on have to do with whether or not it's written, or how well it's written? Okay, well, on that note, a lot of these guys, don't they get picked up from comedy clubs and stuff, which they were originally writing all their own stuff, and... and Speaking of, speaking of which... Yeah, and you know what? The average comedian does 20 minutes, and he's done. But that's all of his own material. Fine. And that's that's right. Than... Are you kidding? 20 minutes would get me to my first commercial break. But the material is a lot different. I think that the material that you use that's, that's appealing to your to your audience is a lot of shock radio, like kind of like uh, Howard Stern type stuff. Where what does that have to do with anything? Is it funny? Or, do we ever do anything funny here? 
Yeah, it, it is pretty funny. I, I find it I find it kind of funny myself. Yeah, well, guess what? There's no one writing. There's nobody writing it. But funny in the sense that it's so off the wall, and I think a lot of... I don't funny. care what the reason is that it's funny. You know, Conan O'Brien is off the wall, okay? And the guy's got 12 writers. And then and then also you mentioned Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller, yeah, HBO and all that, and he didn't do too well, whatever. But I have seen him myself at improv, and it sounded like he did pretty much all of his own material. But it's not a riff. It's not a If you write it in advance and you do the same thing every night, it's not a riff. If you're reading it off a teleprompter, it's not a riff. Yeah, that's that's true. But I would, I, I would. This is a riff. It, it, this a program riff. is a riff every day, every day. But don't you think it still takes a level of skill to be able to to make people laugh in front of a lot of people that you're coming up with your own material? Plus, all I'm to... saying is the the real talent is being able to do it without a teleprompter. But, well, that's what I'm saying. Improv, they have to come up with their own. They're only twenty minutes, like you said. Yes, but. They have to come up with their own material, plus they have to present it in front of a crowd. And they present they the same see. material every single night. I, I just think that there's more room for In a month, yeah. in a month, these guys don't see as many people in clubs or uh, or other venues as we see in a week or in a day. Yeah, it's true. All right, Tom, that's all I had to say. Can you take me out of the bar up? Here you go. David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, David. Hey, I am so glad you're not you you're keeping that Sam Kinison ripoff artist off your show because that's the that that's the exi exact example of what you're talking about. Sam was a funny guy. He can go in there and riff and do all that stuff. That other guy probably didn't want to be on radio. It's because he's a one. He was a one trick pony. Well, I didn't say who it is, and uh, you I, don't know who it is, okay? Well, I know. I, well, it, and I did that I did, by design, and uh, don't try to narrow down who it is because you're defeating okay. the purpose of what I did. Okay. Well, as I said, you know, if, if it, as I said, it's so glad, it's so good to see that, you know, they're. It they're could be any now. comedian who was arrogant in the early '90s when he thought he was God's gift to the earth, who now right. can't buy his way out of television. It could be any number of people. Sure, I uh, I understand that. But I'm so, I'm so glad that you're keeping those arrogant uh, ripoff artists off off your air, off your show. Hey, well, I, I don't keep them off because anybody's a ripoff artist. I keep them off after they tell me they don't do radio. Once you tell me somebody doesn't do radio, I guarantee you they won't do radio. At least they won't do this radio show. Guaranteed. You only have to say it to me once. I've got a very long memory. Right, Margaret? Show indeed. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing okay. Tom, radio is the bastards to talk about. First of all, first of all, you're not going to say that on the air, and if you try to say it again, that's the end of the call. Got it? I'm not going to take the chance, you moron. Moron. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It seems like we've touched a nerve here. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Guys become musicians because most of them are geeks that no woman would ever talk to until they put on black clothes and start playing an instrument. Suddenly, women thought, "Oh, it's a musician." They're the same geeks. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Did you say Lisa? No, Hello? I said, no, I said Lisa. <laughs> yeah, the, you, when the, um, Rock and roll music comes on. You can't really hear your name. <laughs> well, darling, you need to get a new hearing aid battery. <laughs> I think so. I'm on my work phone. It pretty much sucks. 
Uh, yeah, I just was calling a uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Long-time Love- listener, first-time caller. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend's going to kick my ass <laughs> for saying that. <laughs> um, hey, I wanted to call and disagree with you for with about the strike, yeah. the writer's strike. Yeah. Um, I work across the street from a whole bunch of strikers, and you challenged us on um, a... a saying that radio listeners are going to start to listen to the radio a little bit more than we all watch television because of the strike. And I don't think that's true. I think that um, your audience is is pretty much set. We're all here. We love you. We have our favorite personalities that we listen yes, to. Yes, but there are gonna be day. people there are gonna be people who prefer television who are going to get tired of the reruns and more clones of the same reality shows and what have you, and they're going to be looking for someplace else to go. And they're going to go someplace where ultimately they're going to find, they're going to find original programming, live programming, fresh like yours. programming. I agree 100% on, on that, except for the, ma- the main groups, the main uh, teenagers and old folks who live, listen and watch their same programs, their reality shows, their teeny bopper shows. and Teeny I'm, bopper shows? How old are you? I'm No, I'm saying a, a lot of these You can't hear. You use terms like teeny age. bopper. Are you 75 years old? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm 25 years old. 25? A lot, of, a lot of these shows are aimed at people who aren't career-oriented, aren't money-oriented, who don't really care for anything but reality shows and crap TV and game shows and things like that. Well, there'll be people like that, but there'll be people who watch shows like Leno and Letterman and Jon uh-huh. Stewart and Stephen Colbert. And they're going to go say, I- the I'm tired of watching reruns of the same 10 shows. I agree. I am too. And That's they're going to need a place them. to go, and I'm telling you where they're going to go. They're going to come to shows like yours. Shows like mine, come yes. On. Yes, they are. Well, Stephen, Stephen Colbert couldn't do one show without writers. Not one. Not one. He's a he's a very funny man. I, I watch his show sometimes, but I agree with you. He's going to go nowhere without these writers who are out walking up Rosecrans. By the Houstons off the 405 freeway. They're all over town, dear. And again, as I've been saying, I'm not here to disrespect the writers. On the contrary. Uh -uh. I'm here to to disrespect the people who speak their words. Because the minute the writers go on strike, they run and hide. Yeah. You think that over, darling. Cedric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom Likas. Yes, sir. How are you, my man? And I care. I'm doing great. <laughs> Good. Good. I'm calling to, to uh, just reaffirm and uh, tell all you folks out there that Tom is right. Celebrities and actors and uh, all those Hollywood types are going to come to the Tom Lika show to pitch their new, their new, uh, their new, their new movies, their new TV, their new whatevers. Where else They're are gonna they going to go? They they have no other spot to go. I guess they go to Colin's Sleazy Friends. Is that still on cable? <laughs> I mean, where are they going to go? There's not, there's, the, the talk shows are the main place where people promote movies. Oh, Cedric is gone. Okay. That's the main place where people promote movies. There's no Conan O'Brien. There's no uh, Carson Daly. There's no Letterman. There's no Leno. There's no Craig Ferguson. Those shows are gone. They're gone, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. Let's say hello to, look at these, Hamid on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Uh, great, great. Hey, I, I wanted also to say about, you know, the even if this strike didn't happen, as far as uh, all these celebrities and all the publicists, the way things are going, I mean, the time we spend on the freeways, and they should advertise their movies on the radio to begin with, because, like, I don't know how most of people, but everybody I know, we don't watch as much TV as we listen to the radio, so if they want to 
to go out and advertise whatever the latest movies they have or the projects. I think it's it's a wise decision to go on the radio to begin with. Well, as an example, I mean, uh, if you're going home on Friday night after work and maybe you're planning on going to a movie Friday night, what better place to advertise a movie? Exactly. You know, uh, I when you come home, you know, first thing, like, in the car, you have no other choice other than to listen to the radio. When you get home, you know, you're hungry, you have a choice to eat or watch TV. What you do first, you eat rather than you do anything else. Then you shower, you do this, you do that. But in the car, the only thing you do, you have your radio on. So I'm, That's right. It is, you know. And in regards to the other caller was saying that um, with the on TV, I think there is such much, you know, it's so much harder to do your job on the radio because, you know, you don't have your, you know, facial expressions or, you know, you don't articulate, you don't do, you don't have so many things uh, where on the TV, you know, you, it's easier to, you know, show your point or make your point with some of the, you know, hand gestures and this and that. So it, it makes your job harder on the radio, harder than anywhere else, uh, you know, rather on TV. On TV, it's so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and by the way, I, I, I did a TV show. I did three pilots. So I, I know how TV is done. And uh, an hour-long show is a 32-page script. That's it. That's it. Yep, yep. And, you know, and then they sit down there, and they know from, you know, three days ahead what they're going to talk to each other about. And, I mean, people who call it a reality show, it's not really a reality show. It's just, you know, like here, I get a chance to call you and say pretty much whatever is on my mind as long as it's, you know, proper. And you get a chance to, you know, answer me. And this is the reality. Like right now what we're doing, this is the reality show. Where hey, this, is the, this is the ultimate reality show. Ed on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Dad, how are you? Son, I'm doing great. That's great. Dad, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I'll tell you this. It's gotten to the point. When I go home, I, I turn on your show and listen to uh, whatever I missed in your first hour because I frankly think that television has gotten so bad, so contrived, and that if you're a straight guy, there's nothing on television to see. Nothing. And I'm telling you, I was watching, and let me give you an example. I was watching some dumb show called Alias where this guy took a kick from uh, the star of the show. He falls down, and he gets up and says, why don't you do that for? I would never do anything to jeopardize our, our friendship. And I'm thinking, oh, come on, nobody would ever say that if, if he was a normal straight guy. And so when I see these writers and I see them walking up and down the street with their signs, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less because they write some really bad scripts as far as I'm concerned. Well, the writers write scripts to please the people who run the network. So well, I wouldn't necessarily blame it on the writers. I... <laughs> If you see bad shows, somebody made the decision to put them on. Well, you see, there's certainly nothing on for men. There's nothing on television. Well, I've said that for years, that uh, with the exception of sports on TV, there's very little for guys on TV. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Hey, Tom, could you take me out with a screaming orgasm and a dog lapping water at the same time? I'll see what we have here. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know what he wanted. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Just doing a little radio show here, Chris, and it's a brand spanking new episode. I envy you, Tom. I want to be your protege. I want to do an internship with you there, Tom, because you have the ultimate job. Screw these writers and these actors. I want your job. I want to be you, Tom. Tell you what, a lot of the uh, actors probably want to be me right about now. I bet. I bet. I don't. I can understand why. I. How do I get to where you are, Tom? Did you what, Did you go to college for what you're doing right now? I wouldn't recommend going to college for what I'm doing. College is a complete waste of time. Not a complete waste of time in general. Just I wouldn't study broadcasting. Study something useful, for God's sake. Go to college for that. The Tom Likas Show.